Hi folks and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video I get you up to date with my ongoing lighting saga. Oh yes, it's starting to turn into a saga. But before I show you how I got on with the Denali D4 lights on the road, let me show you how it went with the Denali adapters that let me fit the D4s to the Machine Art light bars. Hi folks, right, I've got some good news. Denali auxiliary light mount. So I got a note from uh, Nippy Normans to say, let us know how you got on with the mounts. We think that this width here should be just a bit bigger, should be okay for the uh, light mounts. However, we think that these lights are too heavy for these mounts and we're willing to accept these back for a swap for a different pair. <laughs> So I think ultimately these are probably going to go back. I want at least to see, uh, they might be wrong. Maybe no one's tried this combination before. I'm, I might get lucky. It might hold. So first of all, this is the first time I got them out of the bag. Will this fit that? Oh, no. <laughs> the quick answer is no. Um, it'll, it's a bit of a squeeze. It's going to take off paint doing this. Which is a shame. I think I've just chipped it on the far side already. So it is very, it's very snug. Oh, let's get some uh, light on this, shall we? Yeah, you can possibly see that it's right. That they're basically the same size plus powder coating and anodizing. I think that's what we got here. So it will go on, but it's going to get messy doing it, which is a shame. So that's going to go on there. And that's going to go on there. Yeah, clearly <laughs> I got a, a big problem nut wise. <laughs> I got problems with my nuts. Random nylock nut out of the drawer. Will it fit? Yes, it does. Now here is where I already have to be very careful. I think I might have already ruined the job. So Nippy Norman said they'll accept this back. Well, I've just screwed this bolt down onto the D4 clamp. So there's every chance I've already scratched the uh, powder coating. So they might not accept it back. But the only way to see if this stuff works is to actually fit it and try it. So I've got to go for it. So yeah, here's the thing. That's that's what I want. It, I do want it to sit up right. I, chances are there's a better chance of it not moving if it's hanging down than sitting up. But Sitting up is where I want it. And if I have to end up getting S4s instead of D4s to make that happen, I think they look better in this position, then that's what I'm going to have to do. Now, oh, you get, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. It might not look like anything to you, but I reckon they are slightly, these two uh, forks are slightly towed in. <laughs> so it's slightly bent. That's probably why it's not quite fitting. That's annoying. Let's bend that out somehow okay so this hammer if i knock the hammer in a little bit that should spread those arms out a little i could do with a hammer for that <laughs> i can hear it's, it's on but i can hear the paint being chipped <laughs> i'll be honest with you this is not exactly non-destructive fitting should i fit a washer no nah, not first i'm gonna Yes, I am. Yes, I am first. <laughs> Let's get a washer on. I think I've got enough thread to uh, let a washer go in there. Oh, wow. I didn't realize these ball, these lights, this mount here actually is sliding mount. Why would you want to do that? But I appreciate that actually because that gives me the opportunity to move the lamp down and have less of a, uh, a turning moment, less torque on the, on the rest of the mount. I'm, I'm actually quietly confident that it's going to uh, it's going to work, especially now I've managed to drop the lights in their mount and get it all close, get the whole kind of uh, assembly closer together. Ah, <laughs> apart from this mount here, this little Allen bolt going through the. Uh, through the mount there, that swings with not a lot of encouragement. So there's probably not that much force I can put on this to tighten it up. In fact, I have tightened it up. It doesn't get any tighter really. I can't reasonably put any more force on that mount 
but uh, the light is all, all over the shop. Side to side's fine. That, I'm happy enough with that. I reckon that'll be tight enough. But um, up and down on that mount, we are screwed, I think. I've been having a think. And I think the only way to try and make this work is to get some sandpaper and sand off the uh, anodizing and the powder coating off each of the mating faces between the new mount and the uh, light mounting bracket jobby. That's the only thing I can think of because I think the S4s could easily just swing around on this mount. It's, it's, it's just, there's no grip there. And I've tightened that as much as I reasonably can with my hands and you know that's that's a fair bit of torque going on there and I don't want to strip threads off these bolts I think if I get the powder coating off get the anodizing off get bare alloy to bare alloy on that mount things would be a lot grippier and there'll be a better chance of making the D4s work but if the D4s don't work then there'll be a better chance of getting the S4s to get there and stay there <laughs> when I um, bottom all up so Let's do some sanding. Woohoo! There you go. That's what we're talking about. Let's just see. I reckon, look at that. Generally speaking, yes, if I go over the top, it will move a bit, but generally, that doesn't want to shift. I think we got it. Well, I won't know, I suppose, until a test ride. That'll be the uh, the proof of the pudding. So before that, I better get the other one mounted properly. Where's my sandpaper? All oh, right, it's probably too dark now, but uh, they look they look okay from there. I've got to get the bike out in the daylight to see it for sure. There we are. <laughs> That'll be uh, 20%, I think. Obviously, yeah, there's a lot of lining up to do. What's a uh, main beam like? Whoa, that is quite bright. Not the, not the way I wanted it to happen, but I think the D4s are on and I think they're staying on. And what I want to do is start the bike, get the low beam going against the wall, and then uh, turn on the Denali's at 10% and 20% and just see at this distance, is it making an appreciable difference to the to the lighting? That's off. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I think I can't resist. Let's go for a little spin. If I get flashed, pull over, pull the lights down, and carry on. Yeah, let's go on, let's go. Before we get into it, let me tell you one of the main reasons I got these D4s and the whole setup, just in case I've not made it clear in other videos. To put it plainly, the dip beam on my bike is rubbish, and it was the same with the R1200R model that came before my one. Many owners have tried to improve the headlight performance and they failed. There isn't enough space in a headlamp shell to replace the halogen H755 watt bulb with an LED or HID unit. That would have been a doubtful upgrade anyway, because the reflector is not designed for those sorts of bulbs. So anyway, the first road test turned out wet. And it was hard to make a, a good judgment on the lights because my visor kept getting covered in rain and road filth. However, my initial impression was that the D4s were not throwing enough light down the road to improve on the bike's dip beam. Then when I got home, it occurred to me that the lenses on the D4s were the true hybrid lenses. These lenses actually give a more spread to the side of the road at the expense of distance, which is actually opposite of what I wanted. There are alternate lenses in the box, the spotlight lenses. So I decided to fit those spot lenses before my next test ride. So let's give you some highlights from the second ride. Now, please note that the exposure from both cameras were really changing as a result of the changing light levels. So it, you can't really make a judgment on the light levels based on the videos alone. Uh, I've tried to adjust the GoPro to be a bit better at night. So when you turn off the stabilization, um, I think it handles low light a little bit better, but it'll be more of a jerky picture.
I can see that it is lighting up the road ahead a fair bit. But not a lot. Right, I think it's about to get pretty dark here. So, so I can see the, the Denali's are projecting ahead of the low beam. So yeah, I've, oh, I got flashed. So here we are with low beam. And let's go high beam. And you can see how much it, it makes the road brighter right in front of me. And that's not really what I want. I want it brighter further down the road. Let's see if I can lean these lights up, these spots up. Can you see that, me moving that around? It's not really lighting up the road that much far ahead. So, low beam and 20% uh, lights on the Denali's. Put in configuration mode. There's zero. 10, 20. So yeah, it's, it's lighting up the road ahead. You can see it lighting up the white lines a bit further down the road. Not bad in pitch dark. Let's put the main beam on and try and configure it. Let's go down to zero. So that's zero with the main beams. And that's 100 with the main beams. Yes, there's a difference. Still not quite as penetrating as I would like. When the road in front of me is kind of light in color, you put the main beams on, it's blinding just in front of you, just in front of your front wheel. The reflection level's bloody high. And that makes it hard to see further down the road, ironically. See, that's better. I'm on a bit of dark tarmac and it's easy to see ahead of you, believe it or not. Right, I'm going to do a test to see. Oh, I got flashed. Definitely got flashed there again. So I'm going to do a test to see how uh, comfortable it is riding just with low beam. I think the Denali's as they are now, they've raised night riding speeds from under 40 to about 50. But at what cost for other road users? That's that's the problem. In summary, I've wasted about £300 on those D4s. <laughs> well, not wasted exactly. The real problem that I've got with my lights on the bike is the power and the throw of the dip beam. That's what I'm trying to improve with the D4s. And to be fair, the D4s aren't really designed to solve that sort of problem. But if we put that problem to one side, I do like the extra visibility that the D4s will give me during the day for other road users. And if I make them just do one job, i.e. augment the high beam, then I think they'll do a great job at night as well. Now this presents a related problem really. Let's say I adjust the D4s to do one job and do it well, and that is give us an amazing high beam. That lets me travel at night with a high beam at reasonably high speeds in confidence because I can see a long way down the road. The problem is, at some point, a vehicle is going to come into view from the opposite side of the road, and I'm going to have to switch from the D4s to the OEM dipped beam. At that point, things will get dangerous, because that dipped beam is only really good to about 40 miles an hour, and to be honest with you, a little bit less than that. So, I'll already be travelling too quickly for the dipped beams, and if I'm on the brakes, the front forks are compressing, so the dipped beam will go even further. <laughs> this is not a good mix. Now I will admit that I've not aligned these lights against the wall yet, but in my experience on the road, I think I've realized that using the D4s to try and solve the problem of a poor dip beam, this just isn't gonna work. The problem is that the D4s don't give enough projection down the road ahead of the dip beam. And if I tilt the D4s up to get the optimal light where I want it to be, it'll end up dazzling as the road users, which is obviously no good. It's a bit frustrating to know that back in 2019, when the 1250 models were released, the RS Fared model was upgraded from halogens to LEDs, but the R model wasn't. The only real solution is to totally replace the headlamp unit with another one. <laughs> now, there is a headlamp unit, full LED, that's available um, from AliExpress and from eBay, either from China or India. But I don't think I want to take the chance of spending over £300 on a headlamp unit, which is probably not legal in the EU or the UK. Now, one possible solution to this is to fit a second pair of lights, <laughs> one that will help with the dip beams and one that will work as the mains. And then it dawned on me. 
This is why you see adventure bikes with so many sets of lights. <laughs> now, I could be wrong on that one, but it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? But one thing I haven't done yet, and that is actually to attempt to adjust the headlamp alignment. Now, some of you will roll your eyes and shout at your tablets or phones, why hasn't he adjusted the headlamp alignment yet? Well, firstly, I'm stupid. And secondly, if you look at the manual, it states that the headlamp can only be adjusted downwards in the event that the bike's carrying a heavy load. It can't be adjusted upwards. And I've assumed that the headlamp was set correctly from the factory, but maybe I'm wrong. So this week, I hope to get my bike to an MOT station so I can actually check the headlamp alignment against one of those light charts. So this is where I'm at at the moment. I'll give you folks an update later in the week. If you want to see more fun and games with my R1250R, then uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. In fact, as well as my own bike, I also do test rides on new bikes. So if that interests you, maybe subscribe to my channel and take a look at what I've got there as well. The 2000 subscriber milestone is not far away and I'm getting excited about hitting that and then moving onwards and uh, keep on climbing. Okay, that's it for now, folks. I'll see you in another one soon. Ta-da!